I uh, will call. All right, we are recording, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Seeing uh, quorum alternates and uh, members, um, I will call the meeting to order at 702. Our first item of um, business. Um, I see a lot of people that probably should take a moment and introduce themselves to the committee. And you may want to text um, Ken Feathers our, um, or you know, do the chat with him so we get your name right for our minutes. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Cecily Sarasso from Eastern Highlands Health District, uh, part of the Bike Mansfield uh, Group Two. See, I see three people at a table, but they're all so small I can't resolve them. <laughs> Go ahead, you're unmuted. Go ahead, David. Um, I, so I'm David Palmer, and. Uh, public member and also uh, the vice president of the uh, uh, Bike Mansfield uh, group. Hi, I'm Lon Hultgren, uh, also with Bike Mansfield. I'm also on the Transportation Advisory Committee. And uh, I hate Zoom meetings, but it's nice to see you all. Hello, and I'm Derek Delay. I'm the Assistant Public Works Director and Assistant Town Engineer and just sent you a, tech, a chat message, Ken, with our names. Okay, and let's see. Hi, I'm Melissa Sheard Wright. I'm a resident of Mansfield Center, and uh, I just came to talk during public comment about Pollinator Pathways Mansfield. Okay, and Carla. Hi, I'm Corin Clark. I'm with uh, Student Health and Wellness at University of Connecticut, facilitate the bicycle working group there, and am also a member of Bike Mansfield. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, I think we've gone around the room other than the um, members and staff. Um, our first item of business is the um, Minutes from January 18th. <clears throat> Are there any substantial corrections to be made? I will entertain a motion and second to accept the minutes as presented. <clears throat> I move that we accept the minutes. Okay. Second. Okay. <clears throat> Any member opposed to the acceptance of the minutes? <clears throat> and then the next item we have is a field trip to the um, Birchwood Heights, um, Monticello, and um, Fallon um, area. Um, entertain a motion to accept the uh, minutes as presented. I'll move to accept the minutes as presented. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, a second. I second. Okay. Anyone, anyone opposed to accepting the minutes from the field trip as presented? Because not everyone was there, Mr. Chair. We should also count abstentions. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder, Michael. I, I wasn't there, so I would abstain. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, Melissa, we're at um, public comments. We're a, um, our charter comes from the town council, so the same public comments rules apply of five minutes. And, but then we, um, the committee can, may choose to ask you questions. <laughs> yes, yeah, sounds good. Oh, well, hello, hello, everybody. And uh, some of you are familiar faces from when um, 
pollinator pathway was first getting started several years ago. Uh, Ginny led the charge then from the sustainability committee and the launch went really well and it's been exciting to be a part of it. Um, we put up a town page and um, thank you to uh, some of the committee members who I don't see here, but the Harringtons have established, you know, a pollinator meadow in Marrow Meadow and maintain that. And um, we, the, from that grassroots beginning of three towns, uh, Ginny had organized uh, Mansfield, Chaplin, and Wyndham from the Wyndham Sustainability Committee. And from those kind of smaller beginnings, uh, it has grown exponentially. And uh, we've, we're now up to eight towns who are coll collaborating on it. And uh, every other month or so, there's a, re uh, we're calling it the Northeast Connecticut Regional Pollinator Pathway. And it's exciting to be together with um, leaders from all across, you know, Hebron has come on um, all the way up to Woodstock. So uh, that's um, really been energizing to be part of that. And um, I guess that kind of constitutes a macro level of uh, expanding the pollinator pathway, you know, across a large area. And I think you know, we definitely see a lot of excitement um, from residents of Mansfield attending those Zooms also. But I was telling Michael earlier that uh, it feels, you know, so far it's been volunteer and I recognize that this is a volunteer committee, um, but I think it would be good to connect the volunteer organization of the Poly Mansfield Pollinator Pathway to some municipal um, networking, because um, in the very beginning, um, we had a member of the school, the um, Board of Ed uh, helping launch that. And I think the first year there were some activities that we were able to connect with the schools about. I know the Mansfield Middle School um, did some projects. And so I would really like to see that kind of beginning energy be able to be sustained. So I think, I guess I'm coming here tonight to, you know, because I'm passionate about the health and the long-term health of the Mansfield part of the pollinator pathway and wanna explore options for helping it continue and for expanding, um, you know, continuing to register residents and continuing to educate residents about the importance of native plants in their landscape and um, opportunities to educate them about pulling out invasive plants. We've learned a lot from Charlotte. She has come um, to most of the collaboration meetings. And um, so I guess I'm interested to, you know, know if, if there's interest from the committee in uh, continuing to support uh, the that long-term health of the Mansfield pollinator pathway. And um, I know I've, I did, it, actually it was instrumental to think about coming um, or educational for me to think about coming to speak with you because um, as a resident of Mansfield, I hadn't ever had an opportunity or anything to, that I needed to approach a committee about. So uh, it gave me a chance to look at the uh, mission of your committee, and it does, you know, seem to be a good fit. I noticed there is um, reference to natural volunteer um, at uh, workers. I forget what the term was, but um, you know, maybe there used to be a a volunteer organization for um, stewarding the the lands of Mansfield, and it would be fun to see that revived. Um, I think that I covered everything, but I'm open to questions.
Um, I did have a couple of things as I got down the committee reports or members' reports that you may find interesting, Melissa. Um, okay, if there's no questions from Melissa, um, I don't know which staff member is going to address the um, upcoming parks programming. <laughs> I think okay. we're going to, um, for, well, I'm here as sort of, um, this is Michael's first Parks and Natural um, uh, Resources Committee meeting. Um, he is, and I'll just say a few words about Michael. He did write you um, a nice letter of introduction to kind of talk about some of his background, but Michael has been with the town. Um, this is his fourth week, um, and he's jumped in both feet first, and he's been doing great. He's been out on a few hikes with members. He's um, managed an inland wetlands meeting. He's he's mm -hmm. done a lot, been out on uh, field visits with Jalene doing erosion and sedimentation controls. He's helped to plan the farmers forum. So he is really getting the full um, breadth of what we do as a town. <laughs> so um, I know Vicki and Jim and maybe some other folks have already met met you, uh, met Michael, but um, he's going to be taking over as your staff member. So I'm going to kind of hand the reins off to Michael and I'll be here for support. So take it away, yeah, Michael. So I, I will be able to talk about the staff report, which does include elements of, okay. um, yes, uh, you know, pollinators and, and upcoming parks programming. Um, so I will be able to address that, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you. You're um, welcome. I did notice in the Parks and Preserve, the final brochure, there are, are several hikes um, with um, a TBD that I assume it stands for to be determined um, on who's going to be leading them and so forth. So as we move further into the spring, I'd encourage people to look at their personal calendars for availability. One that I noticed was on in um, the um, some Mill Brook Preserve and see if some of us can get organized to uh, lead those for the town. Of course, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, we do have, a, David Palmer has requested an opportunity to address the committee um, in public comment. Okay. Okay, I didn't see, I don't see his name here, Michael. Uh, he's one of the three, he's one of the trio. Oh, man. one of the three micro people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, Dave, would you like to um, other speak? Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I just got a, a quick um, uh, note here. Um, so, you know, I know you're going to be talking about the uh, uh, bicycle and pedestrian master plan tonight. Yeah. And as I read through it, um, uh, there was a, there was recently a, 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 a notice, an email that came through um, that added a, a, a possibility of, uh, of another set of pathways that might be developed in uh, Mansfield that wasn't included in the uh, master plan. But uh, South Windsor has a, uh, a subcommittee of their parks and rec uh, group called uh, Windsor, South Windsor Walk and Wheels Ways. Um, uh, uh, and they're, they're uh, working on developing a 6.2 mile uh, pathway across uh, South Windsor. Um, and they got the uh, Connecticut Department of uh, Deep, you know, en Energy and uh, Environmental Protection to designate a section um, uh, of the corridor as a CT Greenway. And it's all uh, a part of, um, of uh, Eversource power line right of ways corridor. And I know we've got you know, some corridors in town here that are both used and unused um, uh, spaces, green spaces um, uh, that could be developed for um, uh, biking, you know, trail biking or whatever and, and uh, pedestrian use as well. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, the committee and the staff uh, is aware of that being an option. Um, uh, now, of course, you know, they're, what they're working on is developing, um, uh, they've, they've got a number of proposals out for, uh, for funding for that, but they seems like they got through the first step, which was getting deep 
recognition of the of the Greenlands corridor um, in those sections, uh, so that they could uh, develop them. But um, uh, so just from you know our point of view, we want to make uh, the plan as comprehensive as possible, and it might be something that staff uh, you know would be interested in looking into as a possibility. And uh, and I bring it to the attention of the committee. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any comments for or questions for Michael? And he's given us a nice segue into the, um, um, oh, we have a status report from old business, I see on the uh, parks and recreation master plan. Some of us, um, I, attended an invite lunch and there were several other sessions um, on getting feedback. Then there was a public comment session at the um, middle school that was uh, well re attended. And I don't know how many people responded to the online survey that when I'm going to make the session. I did share it personally with the uh, Mansfield Connection Facebook group. And I think there are several people that did follow that link. So, is there any significant status on that, um, on the Parks and Rec Master Plan? Yes, Mr. Chair, there, there is. That's why the folk from, um, mm. well, there's there's been a, a bit of progress uh, for the Parks and Rec Master Plan. So in the last two weeks i've been meeting with a couple representatives from 110 percent who are the group that are doing that um right now we're working on categorizing programs uh into uh different kind of super categories um in order to really understand what we offer and how we offer them it's the working goal um so we're still in the early phases of the master plan but it is moving along we're having a couple meetings a week i had one today i'm gonna have another one tomorrow um, and uh, once we actually get into the management of the parks themselves, um, I'll be sure to come back with more regular updates. Uh, but right now, mostly just report that, yes, we are engaging, we are moving, um, progress is being made. Um, and as soon as I have something to report, I will tell you, so I will put it in your packets for your next meeting, I'm sure. Um, uh, but yeah, no, um, we are uh, most of the work that I've been doing outside of that for parks is um, getting up to date on all of our management plans and uh, putting together some preliminary ideas for uh, parks management going forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, more forthcoming, but good progress being made so far. Okay, so now I get to move to the parks and um, the, the uh, Mansfield bike and pedestrian plan. And I'd like to invite, with the committee's permission, I'd like to invite those members of that uh, of bike Mansfield that have joined our meeting to participate in our discussion. Gentlemen, do you need to share screens with the presentation today? I will make that request. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just give that. Yeah. To, oh, no, I don't need to do anything. You've already got that power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. We'll find out. Oops, now I ruined it. Yeah. I guess you'll take it away. Well, <clears throat> good evening. Uh, Jim, you may remember in 2016, we when we first put a uh, draft master plan together um, and um, this your committee did uh, review it and made a few suggestions, which we, of course, incorporated in it. And then... Um, that plan was given to the town planning office in 2017. And here we are in 2023. <laughs> so, so when I, when we realized that this wasn't getting forward, uh, moving forward as fast as we had hoped, um, we went in to see the town manager and said, you know, what can we do to, to, to help move this along? And we agreed that, well, it was old now, we needed to revise the draft and that he would help facilitate it getting out and so on. And in the meantime, Jennifer Kaufman became the town planner. 
So all of these were good strokes of luck for our plan uh, because um, we've worked with Jennifer before and, and um, um, she is not a black hole. When you send her something, it comes right back. And so we worked last year with Derek and Jennifer and David and several others, uh, Cecily, to revise the plan, to bring it up to date, which we have done. <clears throat> and now we're at the point where we'd like to see if we can get it reviewed uh, by your committee, by the transportation committee, which it's going to next month. And then I presume there'll be a public hearing or two, or it'll go to the council and planning zoning and they'll have the public hearings. Anyway, we're in the middle of the beginning of the process to try to, to get this plan approved. So the question is, why do we have this plan at all? And the first answer is because um, in the Mansfield Tomorrow plan, the uh, plan of conservation development, which was quite a few years ago, but it's still in effect, it suggested that the town develop a master plan of bicycling and, and uh, pedestrians, pedestrians uh, and bicycling master plan. Secondly, when we first got our, uh, our application to become a bicycle friendly community, we, we had that draft that I spoke of before that Jim and the committee reviewed back then. And we, we tacked that along with our application saying uh, that it would be um, uh, adopted shortly and that we did have a uh, plan in work. And so <clears throat> um, it never actually got adopted. As I said, it kind of died in the planning office, but um, we still need a plan. It's recommended by the League of American Bicyclists and, and in our uh, plan of conservation and development. So we're now finally at the point where we have a plan that we think can, can be adopted. Um, the, the plan incorporates a number of things from, from the plan of conservation development, um, pretty much wholesale because they did a very, you know, it's a very nice plan. And so one of the things does what it was to, to um, move forward with the plan, um, the planning process. Um, the other thing was that the plan of conservation development did actually list a number of uh, projects, both walking and biking, that ought to be uh, considered in the, in the town's near future. It also uh, suggested that the, uh, the criteria for making additions to the networks, either bicycling or, or, or walking, uh, be done. And that's what's shown on the slide here as well. So um, we'll get later to the actual projects that were recommended by the plan of conservation about. So anyway, to make a longer story shorter, um, we did uh, an inventory of the facilities that we have now. Uh, we, again, the town. Uh, of course, the bike routes started off in the 70s, right after the uh, fuel shortage when uh, the town uh, laid out a bunch of bike uh, network, a, a bike route network, and that was built on and added to and so on and so forth. And um, <clears throat> the first map in the plan shows uh, what the bike routes are today. Uh, and they're color coded by uh, uh, whether on a state highway or whether on a, uh, whether it's an off-road path or so on. So we, uh, we noted that there are about 3.7 miles of multi-use paths right now, the separate ones, and about um, 11 and a quarter miles of uh, bike routes that are share the road bike routes, um, about seven and a half miles of sidewalks in the town. And it's, it says here 76.5 miles of trails but I was attending one of those information sessions with the 110% people. And I heard that the trail total was more like 150. So we may, we may have to revise that. Jennifer, you might know more than we, but I, that was certainly alleged at the meeting that we were that the, the trails in town were closer to 150 than 70. 
perhaps the seventy is from our yeah we it, network and maybe it's addition of the hollow federal lands yeah you know, trail and so forth we have that calculated somewhere um one of our uh, former interns marissa did that actually so um we can get a better number they might have been talking about like some of the informal trails as well but anyways we'll get a better number for that <laughs> and how many of those trails are actually hardened enough to take bicycle traffic right right we understand that mm -hmm. so then um we have a second slide that shows is this the the uh, yeah this is the sidewalks and and hiking trails and um they basically for those of you that know the town and the trail systems um we could name the areas, you know, like the uh, uh, Schoolhouse Brook Park has a bunch of trails, and the, the trails in the uh, in the state park, and then there's trails up in each of the uh, town parks and preserve areas. So I, rather than go through all of them, which you you I'm sure you're aware of, let's let's just move ahead here. So. The next thing we decided that we needed to do was to kind of list all the destinations uh, in, in Mansfield that ought to be either bikeable to or walkable to. So we came up with a list of destinations, um, including civic properties, recreation areas, uh, passive rep recreation areas, commercial districts, and some of the destinations by uh, geography. And so the, the next map, is this the map of destination? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then this map shows by the dots where all those destinations are. And there's a table in the, in the, in the plan. By the way, the plan is available on the Public Works uh, webpage of the town's webpage, right? Mm -hmm. It's on yeah, the front yeah. page. If you just go down, you can you can get to it and 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 read the electronic yeah. copy. It was also Lon, it was also included in tonight's packet for the committee. Oh, great, great, mm -hmm. great. Then I can I don't have to spend quite as much time. But anyway, we listed all the destinations and we put maps and those uh and the uh legend here shows some of the ways that you get between destinations and and so on. So then, um, we had, we thought it would be good then to take the plan of development, um, recommended projects and add in projects to connect between the uh, destinations and some projects that were within the destinations. And so between the destinations um, that it included, as you see here, the Southern Gateway to Mansfield Center, um, that would mean uh, the walkway along Stores Road. You probably know there is a walkway on Stores Road, but if you haven't walked it before, you probably haven't seen it. <laughs> but my understanding is there is now a project to to pave that path that goes on both sides of uh, 195 in, uh, and anyway, that's part of the recommendations uh, in the plan. Then from downtown stores to Four Corners, um, these are shown on the next map that we'll get to. Um, and um, the from downtown stores to connect along Maple Road all the way to the middle school. And that's a project that is funded. Um, and so we put those together along with a few projects that were within destination areas. Is, is there a slide there? Yeah. yeah, okay. And so within destination areas, destination areas, there's a few small projects that, that uh, we listed in. Um, in the Southern area of town, uh, there's little pieces of sidewalk that connect. There's already a sidewalk on uh, Meadowbrook Road, but we'd like to see that the plan recommends that that be added both east and west so that it goes all the way from Mans Mansfield City Road to uh, uh, 
195. And then there's always been some uh, desire to have uh, a, a walkway that comes along the back of the Eastbrook Mall, both from the north and from the south, so that you can walk uh, in, into the back entrance of the mall. Um, so we took the projects both uh, within destination areas and between destination areas and put them all on one map, which, yeah, which would is be, this. is that map four? Yeah, this is map four. It's a little different than the one that was provided in the plan from an earlier recommendation from TAC to include all the projects on here. Um, so now you have well, these in uh, purple between destinations. And then also within destinations, if you prefer, we can go to the other map one. Yeah, well, let me see. Yeah. Here's the map four that I've got. It says plan projects. Yep, yeah, I'll pull that up for you. Okay. Okay. So it's a little bit hard to read, but if, if he puts up the, uh, he has a separate slide for these projects. And, and we tried to categorize them by whether they were a multi-use path, that's MUP, there's one through six, whether it was a walkway or a sidewalk, one through 12, 13, excuse me, and um, bicycle routes, uh, BR one through six. So that map shows all of those projects. And I, I guess I don't, think we need to go through every individual one. You have the list uh, that you can see in the plan. I'm happy to answer questions about any of them. Um, but uh, that's what the plan does. It takes all these things, puts them on a map, and it also puts them in a, in a time frame. For example, uh, there are several projects in the multi-use path uh, area, the top projects that are basically in progress, okay? They're either in design or, or very close to being constructed. And then there's a there's one that we listed as close to being funded and that's the, the uh, walkway or the multi-use path between Four Corners and Yukon. And um, the reason we put that as close to being funded because at one point it was actually in the infrastructure, you know, the bipartisan infrastructure funding. It got bopped out, but it's, trying to get back in now. So that's why that's listed. And then a couple of them are listed as um, a long, or at least one of them is listed as a long-term project. So we did the same thing with the walkways. There are several that are, there are a couple that are in progress. Then there are some near-term ones like the ones in the south end of town we thought should be near-term to make those connections because it would be fairly easy to do. And then there's some really long-term projects as well listed in the list here. And all of these bike routes, mostly the east-west ones, are listed as long-term projects um, because there would be some improvements that would be needed that might be difficult and expensive to get east-west bike routes through the, through the town, either through 44 or coming up uh, uh, 275. And through through stores Start and, and into, and into um, um, out. I got out my edge. All right. So then the plan does make a few recommendations. I can't hear well. anything though. Oh, maybe if I turn the video on, uh, the audio on. Tom, you have your mic on. Tom, you have your mic on. Drafting long. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> it's taken us 45 minutes to get on this stinking thing. <laughs> They're so good. Okay, so the recommendations are, of course, project related, but there are also some things that, that the plan makes in terms of recommendations, in terms of planning institutions. And uh, one of the major recommendations is. Um, to see if we can't get either a shared or, or a, a part-time position of an active transportation coordinator for the town. Um, you know, we're all volunteers that, that are, are, are trying to do some of this work. 
And uh, we really feel as though there ought to be someone who is coordinating uh, the town's effort in this regard on, on all the walking and, and uh, by active transportation, uh, both the planning and, and uh, the needs and to some extent the budgeting. There's some recommendations in it about uh, budgeting for, for um, and then finally, uh, and then I'll be quiet for, for questions and, and or other comments from other bike ministry members is, we do recommend and we are working on getting a fourth grade bicycle education uh, program in the PE uh, system uh, for, for Mansfield. We started working on this several years ago when we had three different uh, schools. Now that we have one school, that'll make it easier. It can be all, the, all be done in the fourth grades at the Mansfield Elementary School. And we at Bike Mansfield are actually fundraising right now to buy bikes and a storage trailer and some of the supplies that are needed. We've uh, got, we've talked to the superintendent, we've talked to the, uh, uh, the principal and the main PE teacher would be involved and they're all in. And uh, so we just need a little money to do that. And we're, we're, we've set up a, uh, a canvassing and we'll have a webpage soon for volunteer do donations. And we've done pretty well so far. I think we've raised about $7,500 towards what we need in the first year, which is $28,000 to get it started. So if I've left anything out, Corey, Derek, David, please uh, please speak up. And other than that, we hope you uh, have a chance to read it and, and act favorably on it so we can get it towards adoption. And of course, it's still a draft. So if you have uh, suggestions to improve it, we certainly are ready to listen. I have a couple of questions. Uh, when you speak in this plan about uh, in the pipeline and future planning, who who made that decision? Is that a plan decision, or is that that something that this uh, volunteer committee has recommended in this bike plan, and it's not yet adopted by the town? Yes. Yes, this is a draft plan, has not yet been adopted by the town but it includes some of the projects that are already funded and being worked on. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that um, those projects that are were being pursued for grants were also on the priority list that was identified in the POCD in 2015. So that's kind of what is kind of the near term was kind of portion of that was driven by the POCD from 2015. The, the, would it be the, sorry? Would it be helpful to sh to put that table on the on the screen again? Because some of them are um, multi use paths that we've already gotten grant funding for, um, and some of them are you know are still in the very no. early planning stages. Okay. I believe. Yeah. Which page in the packet is that table? <laughs> There was some, um, I did catch a paragraph in there about um, bike use in the various um, parks. And I was trying to recall where that uh, paragraph actually was. I think it was in the text. Yes, uh, Jim, I do have a copy of that uh, material and it is on page eight of the plan. And I was going to ask about it. Um, it I'll just sort of summarize it here. Um, mountain biking was permitted in Schoolhouse Brook Park until 2016. At that time, the Parks Advisory Committee and the Parks Coordinator um, decided to try 
bikes in several other parks on a temporary basis. And then it would be evaluated after a year or two and banning any problems with the trails, this policy would be made permanent. Um, that needs to be updated. I don't know if this was approved, if these other parks are now have permanent bike trails uh, or if a decision was made at all. And perhaps Jennifer could tell us about this because she might know if a decision yeah. was made. Yeah, because I, I personally don't remember an actual approval after the couple of years. Um, I, hasn't been. Yeah, I don't believe, we, we, there was never, I believe that what happened was, and Lon, refresh my memory, um, there was no action of the Parks Advisory at the committee at that time to, a, to, permit, to permit bicycling. Um, I think you came, you requested, but um, there was an understanding that there is biking happening in the parks, but it's not being permitted. And then when we purchased um, or when we acquired Southworth Preserve, which is the property that is off Dodd Road that we have yet to sign in because we're doing our signage plan, um, we, um, we allowed, we permitted biking there as part of the management plan. But that's the only other park that I recall have uh, you know that the committee allowed biking i think there's been a con, you know a continual acknowledgement that where biking can occur needs to be evaluated um but i don't recall any outside of schoolhouse brook park that that um any biking has been permitted in fact i've sort of that's what i my line has been when people call our office to find out if there's biking that it's permitted in schoolhouse brook park However, we all acknowledge that it's happening in many, many other parks, and we don't have parks, um, park rangers, so, you know, it's sort of happening without being permitted. Um, okay, so, so this text needs to be updated to reflect that. Yeah, right. the, uh, the plan does not do anything ex say, except say that... Um, it should be decided. Yeah. Yeah, I think at some point we'll want to, very soon we'll want to be addressing that question um, as to what the official policy should be. I will personally acknowledge that um, biking on trails is a is a fact of life uh, whether or not the trail is really suited by its construction for the activity um and i had a couple little minor tweaks to some of the maps um uh jim before we do that yeah. could this paragraph reflect that this has yet to be decided because here it's simply reporting a history it is not it's leaving you hanging with the question, did they decide? Did they not decide? So I think there needs to be something in there about making a decision. Yeah, certainly. Okay, thank you, Lon. Yeah. And I think there needs to be a, a, a specific evaluation of the suitability of the trails. Many of the trails in our parks are, would be more prone to erosion with the use of bikes on them. And they're not constructed mm. for use by bikes. And, and the fact that bikes are using them and people are building jumps on trails in, in the town parklands that may not be designed to be safe is of concern. No argument. <laughs> I do think that when we get to the um, Parks and Recreation Master Plan, that one, I, I, I have a feeling that one of the goals will be to, to be more active in determining, um, you know, where where we can bike, you know, which um, parks we're allowed to bike on, on, which trails are suitable for biking, and what we need to do to sort of sign them to educate people. 
Um, do we need to develop um, a park that is, you know, sort of have, you know, one park that is that we're really advertising or marketing as for bicycling, but th that really does need um, some thoughtful evaluation. Um, and I think that's going to, that's going to um, be one of the, I, I have a feeling that that will come out in the Parks and Rec Master Plan. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably a good thing is to, to pause until we see in the plan um, what um, what the need, if this has been facts collected about what the actual need and desire of the people of the town are. Because um, I think, well, Bike Mansfield has done an excellent job of keeping pulse on it, but I think as a committee and our reports to the town council, we only know anecdotally what the need is in the town. Yeah, and I, I agree that there needs to be uh, uh, there needs to be a uh, uh, appropriate recreational opportunities for bikers. But I think the one thing we need to do is also, and I recommend the town consider uh, the bike Mansfield consider this, is what are the there are two populations in town there the the long term residents, uh, and then there's the transient population of the university, and they both use our trails, but some may have more vested interest in 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 having those trails still be available in the long term, and I think your bike plan needs to address this this by parent uh, population. The uh, the one thing I was wondering about, did you look at um, Eastern's campus, although it's only a very small fraction of us in town uh, on your destination list? Yeah, is it is it on the... I don't think we identified as a destination. You mean the Eastern ball fields? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think we have. Yeah, well, that's as close as they get to be in town, but up the hill, um, although there is bus, shuttle bus service from that parking lot, the last I knew to campus. So, I don't think it's on there. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. good point. We need to, we need to add that in. Does yeah. That crew go into Willimannic there? Is that considered part of the bike route? Yeah, but it doesn't go to the doesn't to go the, to up High Street. Yeah, it it, it, uh, it no the bike route goes in on uh, Mansfield Avenue. Okay, the south. So it comes in. Okay, well that's a lot much smaller hill. Okay, yeah. Well, with um, long term with the tech school moving to um, the um, old prison site. I assume that Eastern will be taking over the tech school property. So they are moving closer to um, Mansfield Avenue. That's several years away. I had a few little tweaks to the different maps, which is probably better if I simply uh, send the bike Mansfield a um, a personal email. One of them being that I just got reminded that there was a trail easement from 195, approximately after where Alpha Gamma Rho Fraternity House is, into Monticello, 20 foot wide. From 195, uh, Emma, are we yeah, on, you're, you're, from 195 into Monticello? Yes. Well, that's good because the, the plan recommends that connection. Yeah. You no, know, so and, we, we should and, make note of that. And the other little point is 
uh, you chose the two connections between Birchwood, of the two connections from Birchwood to Monticello, you chose the one that is least easy to navigate at the end of the road. Okay. All right. And my personal one is E.O. Smith has built all but 200 feet of a connection from the post office to Hanks Hill Road. Right. right. And that's that, the significance of that is that it avoids the crossing at Hanks Hill and Flaherty in 195. Yes, I believe that's a, you know, a near term recommended project. Yeah. Yeah. Or in, in the plan. Yeah, it's not shown on your map. Yeah, it is. You just have to look really hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get out my 50 power magnifier. <laughs> There's a, like one little blue dot or something there that yeah. gives it away. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does Anybody else have anything for Bike Mansfield? Hi, my name is Cecily Sarasso again from Eastern Highlands Health District. And we are part of the Bikes Mansfield group and supporting, I'm here tonight um, to support this plan because um, as the local health department for Mansfield um, and the nine other towns. Um, we're here to support activity, um, physical activity rather. Um, and some of these things you may already know, and I know you're supporting these things, but it's worth saying that um, more than one in five adults is inactive in all but four states, and that's not Connecticut. In Connecticut, it's 22.6 people are completely inactive. Um, and getting enough physical activity could prevent one in 10 premature deaths. So, um, and, and they also um, mitigate uh, important health problems like blood pressure, high blood pressure, anxiety, heart disease, and several cancers. So um, we're here tonight to support this, or I am here in support of this because it is um, another opportunity to, or more opportunities for people to be physically active and to improve their health. Um, I would also like to say that um, the comments about um, people maybe biking in, um, in opportunity or rather in inappropriate places. Um, I agree, we also here at Eastern Highlands are really, uh, really stress the importance of safe physical activity. Um, that's why we are trying to push for safe routes to schools, to the elementary school, to try and support the school doing a safe routes program. Um, but what I would say also about this is that when you have designated places to bike and there are paths to bike, um, it leads to people to less often, hopefully, to bike in inappropriate places. So um, having a plan to make places where it is e accessible to bike uh, may lead to fewer people biking in inappropriate places. So um, that's what I have to say. Thank you for letting me have a few minutes. Jim, I think you have Corinne Clark from UConn that would like to say something. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, I can only see a small part portion of the screen with the um, plans on it. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna just can see about four people. Thank you. Corinne? Thank you. Uh, um, yes, I would like to uh, speak in favor of this plan and, um, you know, moving forward to implement the plan. I would also um, like to, um, encourage the town of Mansfield to um, coordinate plans with UConn. UConn has recently adopted an active transportation plan. And um, I do believe that there are locations on UConn campus that are destinations that residents like to go to. And there are definitely destinations in Mansfield that UConn students like to go to. And if there is a way to um, you know, include in a route network, um, safe 
access for um, bikes and other forms of active transportation on and off campus that would be, um, I think, useful to uh, both parties. I am, I am wondering what, what actions the committee should take to um, support the bike Mansfield plan. And I'm looking for some suggestions from people. We certainly can. Um and will make the edits that you have suggested. Um, so if there was a way you could say, okay, as edited uh, with comments, we're, we're okay with this, that'd be great. If not, we'll make the edits and come back. <laughs> okay. okay, do we, is the sense of the committee that we'd like to make a motion to compliment Bike Mansfield on their, on their draft and support it as it moves forward. I think I would support that for what's worth. I'm looking at this and the, some of the areas that are mainly a lot of the ones that are in progress or funded are the first ones that jump out at me, but are areas that I know are problem areas for people trying to bike, um, getting around town. And so, you know, I'm looking at this and thinking there are a lot of great little spots. There are a couple that I think, oh, it'd be nice to get this too, and it's not on there. But I think this all looks like a great, great step forward and would okay. be excellent. Okay, I'll right. take that as a motion to endorse the draft plan, Miranda. Sure. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Anyone opposed? And I'll look to Ken to put that in some formal language that sounds nice. Would you like to try to rephrase that again before we vote? Okay, Miranda. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, I guess I will move that we um, endorse, is that the right word? Uh, the plan as with, with the edits that have been suggested um by Jim Morrow. Mm -hmm. There was a couple and, other and people Vicky. too. And yeah, and the, Vicky, well, there, well there were several, sorry. several and people all of the in. comments. <laughs> yes, there we go. Whatever has been suggested and right. Shelby <laughs> suggested. We don't need names. <laughs> so so I will I will put it as we endorse the draft plan with edits suggested by the committee and encourage finalization in the public process. That sounds great. Okay. To, can you, Juliana, just to make you sure still? that we understand what those edits were, hmm. uh, the biggest one was having to, to deal with uh, uh, obtaining a, a, a lasting policy for uh, mountain biking, not in the plan, but the plan calling for that and making making sure that it shows that there is the policy is not adopted now. Second was to include uh, Eastern, uh, the Eastern Connecticut University ball fields in as a destination, right? Mm -hmm. What was the third one? <laughs> the, the, the 20 foot wide trail easement in front of oh, the game. Third one would be to, to note where that easement is in the discussion of the connection between um, uh, 195 and uh, Davis Road through Monticello. The EO Smith and Hanks Hill Road. I think we said we have that one. Yeah, that one's Hanks Hill. Yeah. 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 So those are the three then, correct? Yeah. And, and, and to coordinate with UConn. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. And, and Lon, we are going to need to talk with you about the Monticello connection. Uh, we yeah. have, in fact, that's part of our next business item, which is not related to what you're trying to do. But um, there are a couple of options there, and each one of them has its challenges. So I don't I don't want to take committee time right now to talk about them, um, but we really need to get that decided uh, before you have a specific plan for that connection. 
So uh, I think that's, we need a, a future discussion about Monticello. Mon yeah, that's great. I don't mind being involved, but the person you really need to talk to is Derek because he's in okay. the engineering office and they're going to be the ones that, you know, design the project. Yeah. Right, so but I, I but Lon, to... I think you need to understand what the problems are, so you know yeah. why it is yeah. the way it is. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, I I think one thing where this is a plan, uh, if it simply acknowledges that there's several options to make that connection from okay. from st yeah roughly from Stores Center to um, the Davis Road Middle School area. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. I think it's till we actually get out and start doing work on the ground, things may, you know, we'll really know which which is the best one. Right. And, I, and would... I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to go out with someone from Bikes Mansfield and physically look at those options. There's there's just no substitute to, for standing there and seeing what the ground is actually like. Okay. Miranda, I agree. I, I agree, Miranda. but I I I, again, I'd say you need to go out with people from the town. Yeah, I, but let's. Yeah. I, I'm okay. talking about okay. the town and bike man okay. together. I, I, I see Miranda <laughs> raising her hand. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to note that in that area, one of the few things that I did notice is that um, you you know you you have a great plan for the bike route, multi path use path going along Maple Road and everything. Spring Hill Road, as it connects Davis to the middle school, a lot of people, instead of doing Maple, when they're cutting through, they cut over Davis and over that way. And it's a bike route, but it still is problematic with the speeds people go on it. So when you're talking about connecting Davis and Monticello and all those areas, you might want to look at that as well. Okay. For, um, for people who don't know, Miranda lives on Felon. So she has more than a casual. We get so much traffic through so traffic that, on Davis. You know, it's incredible. Knowledge of that area. <laughs> Same as I have one on Hanks Hill. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we have a motion. Um, are we ready to vote on it? Or as Ken paraphrased it? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So. Julianna, are you still the second for the motion? I'm happy to be the second. Okay. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Oh, Tom, are you opposed to the motion? Okay. So we have one dissenter, Ken. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, if we're done with bike mansfield, that moves us on to the the segue is to our site walk on um and we've already looked at the um trip report. Um, I ended up very confused about what was the best way to um to make connections, but the um it would prove to be desirable to get a good connection from the end of Monticello down the Felon through the town land. And possibly improving the existing, the, the connection of, um, for ease of walkability between uh, Monticello and um, Felon's existing trail, uh, Birchwood, I should say. There's an existing trail, the one closer to 195. The further one probably should be made so it is apparent that it's really a trail. You know, just some clearing and signage. But it's a real, it should have a flight of stairs on it. It's steep enough. So does anybody else have thoughts on that? Um, what we we were concentrating on the trails between Monticello and Felon. Yes. And uh, thanks to Miranda, it was she was a great guide for us. We knew where we were going. We didn't get lost. <laughs> and uh, that connection and uh, has already been developed 
by residents over a long time. The trails are well worn. Um, in terms of wetlands, there are some old stone bridges across a brook that the trail system takes advantage of, and they're they're really cool. It's fun to walk across them. And the only real work that needs to be done is to blaze the trails and mark a trail from Monticello into that system and from Felon needs to be cleared into that system. Um, so that, and then the, the trail needs to be marked and the town boundaries need to be marked also in some places. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward project. I think it's gonna benefit a lot of people who are, some of whom are already benefiting from it, but I think the town signs, um, boundary signs will alert other people to the fact that they can walk there. Uh, I don't think there should be a name for it, like a park. I don't think there should be a big fancy sign at either end, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't know, Miranda, you might have a, some thoughts about that too, whether there should be more notification at either end about the trail system. So I don't think a big fancy sign or name for the park is necessary. I think that just what you're talking about in terms of blazes would make a world of difference. So just for a bit of perspective, one of the things I was telling um, people when we were walking around this trail is that, you know, I lived here for, I think it was five and a half years before I realized that trail was a hundred feet from my house <laughs> because it just is not connected to my road specifically and the signage it doesn't let you know that there's a footpath there there's there's signage saying that you know even on Monticello the signage um says oh there's town land there but not that there's a footpath right and okay. so I think that there are residents who are clearly using it although I actually never run into any of them on it it clearly gets used from how worn it is um but really there are probably many people right in this area who would just use it if they actually knew that it was there right. um and it, it wouldn't be that hard and as for the part that actually needs clearing it's not long at all it's a really short little connection yeah. great what i'm thinking of as you were talking miranda was um the town public works department made a a signpost literally out of a four by four to place on the sidewalk coming down 195 indicating moss sanctuary trail i think is what they uh place placed on the post just so that people realize where the trail goes and i heard some really nice feedback on the signage by the way to everyone on the and how well moss sanctuary connection has been handled during the switch over and everything this past week i got some really nice feedback from some people who walk it basically every day so well, can i just suggest i think that we're the we have um those you know footpath only signs we've yeah. got plastic blazes mm -hmm. the the we're we're kind of transitioning over to those plastic blazes um if we have like specific direction we can work to to get this stuff done where i'm happy to michael is learning where I keep I use I keep all the signs in that closet, so um, I'm sure he'd happily distribute them to you, <laughs> and we could get something at Science Plus made, um, you know, similar to what's at the Moss Sanctuary. But we just need direction, and if folks wanna, you know, if we can give you the blazes, you guys can put them up, and then we can. I guess I'd like to know what you want to do in terms of mapping. Um, if you want to put anything on the website, because it's not like a, you know, the way the website is working now, we have like Moss Sanctuary, and then you click there, and then you get the map of the Moss Sanctuary. So I guess if we're going to um, inform the public of this, we just have to kind of figure out what the best way to yeah. do this. This is called right. like connector, I don't know. So yeah. things yeah. like that. I'm if, if I'm, my personal thought as you were speaking, Jennifer, was um, that what we do is revise the Moss Sanctuary map um, so that it shows the two connections that we have so that people realize, you know, rather than do a whole another web presence, you know. 
Right. I'm starting to envision is the, the great brochures, but we also have downloadable um, geo reference PDF maps for each one of our um, areas in town that people can use on their phone. Well, one suggestion would be is um, if they, the concept they had is uh, trails and destinations, if our existing map universe is considered destination maps, then an overarching trail map that shows each destination as a zoom in opportunity would be something to go in the future as we build out this, this town wide trail network. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. In the meantime, it might be good just to get something on the web um, yeah. that is just sort of like a connector. So, I don't know, something, I mean, we'll have to think about that. But I, th I yeah. think the first, what I'm hearing, and the, the easiest thing is to get that trail marked and to get yeah. a sign there. Um, yeah. Then developing a map will come later. Um, you know, that's something we'll, we can take a look at, but it sounds like we just need to get, get you guys some trailblaze, some of those yeah. white strips mm -hmm. and a four, uh, get a uh, four by four installed and um, call it a day. Yeah. And that's, we, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking is probably the level. Um, I'm thinking that Miranda and I should get together sometime next week or, you know, and uh, if anybody, and we'll share out informally, you know, if anybody, want, anybody else wants to participate. Um, so. You can absolutely do that. Yeah. Because it wouldn't take us too long to get the trail ragged in so we know where we're going. When it comes to the actual mapping, I can work on that in the office um, yeah. with the GIS layers. I can work on the map. I can rough draft the map. The one thing yeah. I will say, just from a standpoint of future forward looking, the trails mostly exist. The trail that we have to do on that separate property to finally connect Montessori to Felon is not that hard. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah, a, a machete will clear the, the little brush that is there. Um, we rake a path. Um, it, it's like lazing. The actual yeah. hardest part of it is the fact that we do not technically have the right to access the trail from where everybody accesses the trail. I don't yeah. think um, because that lot does require passing over somebody's property, which is a yeah. driveway easement to lot seven, which we don't have the right to. So yeah. the actual long-term hard part of this is we got to cut a trail through the woods, where it's probably not that thick. Um, no. Everything up to that, though, is very simple. So, yeah. um, and because we have those existing survey maps, it's actually pretty easy to know yeah. exactly where we are, um, start to get those markers out in the woods with rough approximation. So I, I think yeah. this is eminently achievable and sits well in yeah. the um, high value and not that hard to accomplish goal. Um, so if anyone has specific tasks they want to give me, just shoot me an email uh, of, of um, what the committee thinks they should organize with yeah. on that. Yeah. I can start plugging away at that. Um, yeah. I, I would say that I personally would see the big thing as getting um, the, um, the town property boundary signs. There are none on Felon Road and probably on the intermediate boundaries, you know, as people enter. Um, right. you know, and I produced the rough, uh, GPS layers for Simpson Woods. So I think we can at least send you a, a KLM file to, uh, start with. Sure. I haven't had to break out my Esri skills in a few years. Can't wait to uh, tangle with that. <laughs> I don't think it will be that hard to get a trail from Monticello into the existing loop, yep. trail loop. Um, it's just knowing exactly where the boundaries of lot eight are. Yep. And they may need to be marked with town boundary signs. That's I the think. one spot I'm thinking we need to, so as we bring the 
it's probably a hundred feet of trail that yep. we have to put in, make sure it is on town land. Right. Where I mean, people it's, it's doable. Come. It's just, yeah. just making sure we're really on town land. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the one one task that I would give you, Michael, and the, probably the town engineering department to figure out just where we can put the trail. <laughs> from from Monticello. From Monticello. Yeah. And the other thing I had, I don't know how many of you people on the Monticello to um, Birchwood connection. I don't know how many of you um, get the um, Park and Forest Association mailings, but in the um, most recent one that came, um, which is slightly more than send us money, please. Um, they did have a picture of what were they calling it? Broadwaying, where they lay two bunk logs on either side and do a gravel fill. That section through the wet area um, as you leave um, Monticello going to Birchwood probably could benefit from a similar construction. Although I and we would need a determinant before that happens, we probably would need a determination from the wetlands agent, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Jim, is that on the Austin? Awesome I know the guy. I can I can okay. see what we can do. Actually, actually, I believe the Austin property is the um is the dry section because it starts at a stone wall that it gets wet. So I assume that that's actually on that trail easement that we have. Um, I have to tell you, I looked up the conservation easement on lot one, yeah. which is the connection from Monticello north to the Austin yeah. property, which is on Birchwood. There is nothing in the conservation easement about public access for a trail. It is a standard conservation easement. So I don't know how we got started with the idea that there was the Wait, right for public the, access. Now, do you know about this, Jennifer? I wanted to ask you about it. The one that the the there's a little um the conservation easement from Monticello to Birchwood Heights. So I have to pull the map, but I believe there is a, a narrow section of that that it that does have public access. That was something that um oh boy, what was the name of that subdivision? But Greg had uh, done the fellows yeah. Yeah. fellows yes the so yeah. there, i'm 99 percent sure that there's some documentation yeah. there the, the, that, that, that is yeah. consistent with my memory jennifer i mean yeah. i just remember something about it but when i looked at the conservation easement i was like where is it <laughs> i don't know yeah, it, it might it might be in the map not in the language on the, of the, on the subdivision map it might yeah. be i because i mm -hmm. I think I've been, um, I think I've looked into this before and I'm 99% sure that there is this, um, I'm, I'm basically 100% sure that we yeah. have public yeah. access along yeah. the easement. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll check the subdivision map and okay. see what it says. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is Ken, just suggesting that if we do put a trail in and, we, and do any wetlands improvements, we should probably make them uh, robust enough to survive bike traffic. If we put trails in and do wetlands improvements, we're in the Wetlands Commission, so they're going to ask lots of questions. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I can probably slap down some this is town property stickers tomorrow. So we'll start there and then yeah. see what we can do. Good. Well, the section we need those on um, is the section between Monticello and um, Felon. We're talking of the next section up, which I don't think we've walked on the site walk because many of us have used that section um, in personal walks between the two roads. It's kind of an obscure start as it leaves Monticello. Um, the landmark I use is a 
transformer that's in the weeds where I start. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else on our site walk? Okay. Okay. Joshua's trust um, talking with John Hankins and so forth um, had suggested getting together as we did before we went into lockdown every other year or so and talking about goals and um, so forth in town is why I had this place here the you know and I do I think last uh, in previous past what we did was invite them to a um, to a meeting because with freedom information it's simple if we post the meeting and then invite people to it for an agenda item as opposed to go through special meetings and so forth i did reach out to joshua's trust directly mr chair um to several of the employees there to see if they were interested in coordinating for this meeting i didn't hear anything back yeah. Uh, they noted that they were having a larger coordinating meeting for Joshua's Trust itself in April, um, and that if if some individuals wanted to go, yeah. they could, but we should avoid everyone going because then it's accidentally a meeting. Um, yeah. But I will once again extend the invitation to Joshua's Trust to come to our May meeting if it is amenable to everyone um, to see if it could be good since we have so much contiguous land um, and connection of places like the Nipmuc Trail runs through both of our properties. Yeah. Well, there's several places, Akuni Rock, we have a joint, they are, they are the entity that has contracted with the town to maintain the town open space. We should kind of just dust off that agreement and make sure Everyone still agrees to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's yeah, all those type of things should be should right. be uh, agreed to. You know, yeah, should be reviewed periodically. Okay. Yeah, it was John Hankins who I think is moving on to the board. I'm not sure in what capacity that encouraged me to get together as we were going through. Um, the uh, Mansfield uh, Rec Parks and Rec Master Plan. Um, okay, that brings us to something that Michael alerted me to, and I visited. I un understand several other people on the committee have visited the um, Denham Town Forest um, White Oak Access um, quite a while ago for a couple. Uh, Quite a while ago, we um, the College Park condominiums and the Board of Health or the Highland Health District came to the town about improving their septic system. And the construction now has actually been done under an easement for their leach field to be in the Denham Town Forest town land because um, they physically did not have enough land for an adequate leaching field. So now we have a large open space um, that is of limited use and quite sloped down as some of you who probably visited there saw. So the question is, what exactly do we do with that? Um, my personal, my personal vision is I think I shared with you in an email was to have a, um, you know, to do it as some type of pollinator garden. Um, but with with the thing is over a leach field, as we all, many of us personally know, you really don't want permanent woody vegetation or even massive vegetation sending, um, you know, roots and, and blocking your um, drain pipes from it. And the other thing I saw was it was would become an open meadow that could have, be ringed with uh, multiple bird houses to improve nesting habitat. 
Um, one thing, Michael, as I'm thinking about this, we should yeah. dust off the wetland um, license that was, mm -hmm. um, there was a renewal last year. And I believe we talked about, or there was some agreement where we talked about um, the fact that the condo association and the town would need to agree to mowing and uh, the yes. different plants. So, so, we'll have to... so I actually, I did look at that. Um, Great, <laughs> so yes, the condo association of the town agreed that it is the condo association's job to mow the lot three times a year, um, which is currently more than we do for Marrow Meadow, which I believe is once. So it would have to be a modification to that agreement if we wanted to promote it as a, a native meadow or pollinator garden. But considering that otherwise we're just looking at a big slopey hill covered in low grass, I don't know that's a bad thing. Um, but because there's an agreement, it does get a little more complicated. Um, so I, um, I personally can't think of a better use right now for that land, a native meadow. Um, it's too hilly to do anything with, um, really. You don't really want people tramping about on your leech field um, for a group of, uh, it's probably 50 houses, uh, just in terms of habitation units, because most of those units are four. Um, so that's a lot. It would be best if it was natural, but we can't let the forest grow back, right? So um, I will look into the methods by which we might revise that to make it a little bit easier to do the meadow. Um, as well as the seeding that is going to go down. Because right now, I don't think that we have to put down anything like conservation seed mix or wildflower mix. Um, I think it's currently just intended to be grass seed. Um, it hasn't been seeded yet, I don't think. It didn't look seeded when I was tromping around there. Um, so if we could make those modifications early, it eases into the process very easily. Let's, yeah, let's talk about, I think we could probably adjust that condition so that it's just mo. They just need to keep the woodies down. I don't know why right. they need to mow it three times a year. That seems like a lot. Right. I'm sure they don't want to do that. So we should just, we, we can look at that and then we can, we might be able to say, you don't have to mow it three times a year, but you're going to have to pay a little bit more in seed. Um, and you'll have to do some sort of um, meadow seeding, you know, meadow yeah. mix or something like that. So let's, yeah. we should probably do that sooner rather than later because they're, they're going to want to put something down i would yeah, imagine yeah. yeah so it's a lot of it's a lot of bare dirt slope yeah this is uh, ken i just i just got a catalog that specifically cited that they have septic friendly seed mixes <laughs> so maybe no deep tap roots but uh, uh, somebody to bring in on, on what might be appropriate would be uh, the connecticut arboretum down at uh, connecticut college yeah, I think we just probably need to order, tell them to order seed, like yeah. ASAP, because I think they need to get something down there. Um, but yeah, a septic friendly would be something they would they would definitely need, and it should include natives and some sort of pollinator. Yeah. yeah. Things and, and then on, and on and on the mowing, it could be if it's three times a year, it could be a sectional mowing. You know. It does, you know, wouldn't have to be the entire area. I don't, if it does not need to be mowed to maintain the septic, vi the septic system viability, then I'm sure they'll be thrilled that they won't have to mow that. They, they yeah. you know, with more maintenance yeah. time. For them. Yeah, I was envisioning you mow, you mow a third or half of it each time you mow. So yeah. this tall stuff that is bee forage and probably knowing the size of that area, they'd want to, the mower should have a flushing bar out in front of it so that um, birds don't get caught in the mower. I don't know that they'll, that the problem is, is that I don't know that they're going to have that kind of equipment. Yeah. So I think you have to kind of work with what they have. Um, yeah. well, I, I mean, what, they're yeah. like a low, they don't have a lot of a big budget for maintenance. And so I yeah. think just have to come up with yeah. something that works. Yeah, they are one of our low income housing um, areas and should be definitely encouraged. A flushing bar is simply something hanging out in front with, with enough chains, the odds are it's gonna hit anything that's 
in the way, you know, you know, brush the bird half a dozen feet out in front. There's also the issue of, this is Charlotte speaking, I'm having a lot of trouble with my computer. Um, the issue that even when you mow, there are woodies that'll get in and because it's a septic field, not just a pollinator habitat, it would seem to me that someone's going to need to walk through that field and make sure there aren't pine trees getting established. And yeah. even the mowing Jim's talking about isn't necessarily going to keep that from happening. It'll just cut the tops off. In, in general, um, you can get away with mowing every other year, but um, or mowing half the area one year and the other half the other year. But again, when, when you're in this septic field situation, then you're gonna really have to be careful about um, pine trees getting established or other fast growing woodies. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't um, be surprised that the trees on the edge discover there's a source of moisture and start sending roots there. It's possible, yeah. but let's just let's wait for the engineers to weigh in just yeah. in terms of the speculation on it. We can ask Derek. I know he reviewed that plan um, and I'm sure he doesn't have more pressing work. Um, so, uh, you know, but all valid concerns. But at the same point, um, uh, until we know, we're not going to know. Uh, they're going to have to maintain the D boxes at some point that are under the field. So mowing at some point is going to be necessary. Uh, Mr. Chair, I see that uh, Juliana Barrett has raised her hand. No, thank you. Thanks. Um, so I just wanted to um, point out that some of the seed mixes are great. Um, and, and I'd be happy to help to make sure that the seeds are native um, plants as opposed to some of the mixes that use non-natives. Thank you. <laughs> Could you send over a few um, suggestions, Juliana, um, for su suitable for septic systems? I don't know if you have, if, do you use New England wetland plants or? For the most part. I, yeah. I just thought Ken sent Prairie Moon. Prairie Moon's good. Um, okay. But again, you got to be real careful. I mean, I, I usually go through and I check every single species for the most part, you know, yeah. just to make sure in using those. Yeah, you you can sometimes get special mixes made. New England wetland plants is from Massachusetts, and they have these mixes that are pretty good. They sometimes have non-native plants, but they don't have invasive plants. And I would certainly recommend them over Prairie Moon mm -hmm. because Prairie Moon is from the prairie, and they have a lot of non-native plants. They're very pretty, but they're not necessarily what we want in New England. Okay. Anything else on uh, the white oak uh, trail things? I did I have, have a couple more recommendations on the trail that I, I shared out for email. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is what is happening with the parking area and also the driveway into the field for maintenance vehicles. So the parking area has a specific shape um, that was called out on the plan. That was what was there before. The plan did not call for it to be changed. In order for the site to be considered done, it's gonna have to be put back the way it was. Um, now, they're definitely far beyond the edges of disturbance right now, from what I can see, so that's going to need to be fixed. I don't believe, so I did pull the plans, because um, I believe you had mentioned that previously, Vicki, in another conversation we had. I did not see anything in terms of paving uh, going up to the field. I think it's gravel um, and loose aggregate. I didn't see any indication it would be millings, so I think it's just crushed stone. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's any other on-site improvements intended. The boulders are there and act as natural bollards. Um, so I, right now, it seems like they're gonna need to fix the paving area, but then they'll be done. 
once they put down crushed stone, it does unfortunately leave the trailhead behind the access gate. So the question of whether or not we're moving the trailhead to be closer to the parking lot without having to go into that field is a question that should be compensated if people haven't gotten a chance to get out there to look at what we mean. The trail is perfectly accessible and otherwise it wasn't touched. It's just, you have to walk up a little bit of the hill and it's behind a gate. And I don't know if that makes it uninviting and less appealing to people. So things to ponder. But yeah, I, I, we wouldn't be able to give them their final wetland sign off or release any bonds or anything like that until the parking lot's fixed because it's not done. Okay, so so they are going to put some some material on the parking lot so it won't be muddy. Yeah, if they want their permit to be marked done, I'm going to make them do that. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> otherwise the site's not done. Um, yeah. It's okay. like probably one triaxle, so right. that's, it shouldn't be hard. Yeah. Um, a question I also had asked, and Jennifer might have the answer to this, is um, they cut down a lot of trees to create that open area. I assume there was plenty of oak in there because of the surrounding woods have quite a lot of oak. And what happened to the lump, to the timber? Was it sold? I am not sure what happened to that timber. Um, I can ask. I can ask. I'm not quite sure. I did ask Derek actually. Um, okay. uh, yeah, I did. I did follow up on this one. And I asked Derek. He didn't know. Um, he said he could yeah. investigate. He believed. So he noted that um, the ultimate price that was given to the town for the easement was fifteen thousand, and that it's likely that the price conveyed was low and probably included the value of the lumber acquired by the people who are on the easement, but that was his speculation. Um, he didn't have anything else that he could think of at the time, but that the lumber was likely calculated into the price that was paid for the easement. Let's, um, let's kind of circle back on that, Michael, mm -hmm. and try to kind of drill yeah. down and figure that out. Right. I mean, because if it was sold to a mill, and it was probably, you know, thousands of dollars worth of oak that went out of there, um, you know, in theory, unless it's part of the 15000 that came to the town that I assume went into the open space fund. Yes. Hope, um, then it's the value of the timber should go in the open space fund unless it was included in that 15000 Right. We will we'll do a little research on that. Yeah. Um, the other question is, what is going to happen with the Japanese knotweed that is invading the parking area and spreading into the woods? That we have not discussed, and we, we should, um, before they put that parking lot to, back together. I don't know. I mean, to get rid of that, you really just need to spray it. Um, and you need to continually spray it. I don't know that there's another way. I've heard that you put stuff down and the Japanese knotweed just grows up, you know, through mm -hmm. the material. So even through, I've heard it even grows up through pavement. Charlotte might have a better <laughs> sense of, it's just, it's nuts, that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think Michael, why don't we put something on the calendar to talk to Jimmy Gailey, um, the contractor out there, and just to kind of ask him some of these questions and kind of get a clear idea of how we're going to put that parking lot back together. What if there, if anything they can do while they have their equipment out there to deal, like to, to even dig up some of that knotweed. Um, so I think we just have a few little um, items to kind of deal with that Michael inherited that we could have dealt with maybe but earlier, but we'll 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 come to a solution on this. We'll get it figured out. I'll I'll uh, put it on the calendar for tomorrow. Okay. One other thing I noticed when I was out there, if on the side of the parking lot opposite from the knotweed, there's a there's a essentially an old borrow pit, and it it is a kind of a closed depression that will accumulate moisture. So we might want to make 
make it filled or drained a little bit. Sounds like we need to do just, we need to work with um, Jimmy out there to see what he might be able to help us do for a parking, just a, a little bit of a parking area makeover. He might be willing just to, to do that um, for the town. I don't know. Right. Um, and I just remembered that there is a gap between the large boulders that would allow a trail bike, maybe even a small ATV to get through the gap. And that leech field would make a terrific place to run around up and down the hill on motorized. So on whoever is doing the boulders, I don't know if it's the town or a contractor for <clears throat> the condos, um, but they really need to put a couple more large boulders in there. A couple of those are fairly low and flat, which would just be a creative. I just sent to people a link for the um, stumpage prices from the extension service. Um, you know, and Oak is in this summer was $185 a thousand board feet. That's for a standing tree in good shape. <laughs> in the woods well one other thing i noticed is the first part of that trail goes it's across the top, across the top of the uh, um, slope and there's nothing that would prevent people from just if they get their bike through the boulders coming right down that slope with it i would see also a lot of people coming at least down the trail, seeing their car parked there and cut right to it. Not just bikes. All right, well, we, we need, clearly need to go out there and look at, the uh, look at the parking lot, look at how, just to make sure no motorized vehicles can get on that septic system or into the trail trails. I know that there have been issues with ATVs entering into the trail from that area. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. That inspection was on my list for tomorrow anyway. So that's, I'll just to make sure that I note all of these uh, such that yeah. I can mm -hmm. read a report so you can read it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on uh, White Oak Dunham Town Forest? Okay. That brings us to a staff report on what's going on with some of the development. I'm actually getting, there's so much going on that I'm getting a little confused. <laughs> I hope they are not as confused by the volume. By the, the sheer volume of applications coming in? Yeah. And the, oh, we're doing great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the story map is really nice. Yeah. Very well done. I adore this technology. When I, before I worked uh, in Mansfield, um, I, I used to fantasize about having basically a big map table of the town that I stuck push pins in and had like little tags that told me what it was and I could pull the file. And then I realized that is just story maps, but 300 years old. So I'm very excited to be able to use this technology. I really like updating it. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. I big fan. And I will keep updating it and bring you the uh, update. Yeah. Every time. yeah, I'm I'm a lurker on the Facebook Mansfield Connections group, and oftentimes I somebody has questions about something. I just post a link to that map with an encouragement. Everybody should watch it in town. You know. Glad it's getting good publicity. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see this. Um, anybody who's driven 195 knows that the standard is under construction. Um, I noticed about a week ago that Yukon is starting to disassemble the former Mansfield Apartments building so they can build 
do their plan there. And um, was it 450? There's two up, um, they're two separate subnets, but I think they're connected um, coming in on um, 44 um, west of um, where um, the uh, Dollar General and, and Mansfield um, Professional Park is. I know those two are coming along. I'm not sure what else is in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. That particular one, um, and was it 454 is is a what the developer is calling it. Um, I'm thinking that we should um when the conservation commission goes out, some of us should join them and get an understanding of what the um does trails and stuff proposed on that development, you know, and see what's going on that Is we request that that be a joint. Family at, um, 541. 541, yeah, yeah, thank you. So I did send out that um, save the date for the Conservation and Inland Wetlands Commissions today. Um, the plan for that site walk is to have it occur, I believe, on the 12th of no the 13th thursday the 13th at 4 p.m of april um yep. that will see the comments from the town uh um peer reviewer land tech come back and be received um, and available by everyone for review um if this commission wants to set a special meeting at the same time and place you can and then you can just also walk along with the meeting um it, the bit plans are in my office um, to review. Um, if anyone wants to come in, we have the big ones. Um, so it's uh, it's a big proposed project. There's a lot to go on with it. Um, so we're looking at that. Uh, Jen, welcome back. Sorry about your computer. <laughs> um, you are also muted on your iPhone. So just so you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, you're absolutely welcome to do that. We'd love to have you along. Yeah. Okay. It's the sense of the committee as I, I personally feel that we should um, join that site walk as a special meeting. Do you, um, you don't have to have a special meeting. You can just join and you can, yeah. uh, basically the way that works is it's just posted. Um, there's no comments on the merits of the proposal and anyone is welcome to join and we'll just note you as attendees. I don't know that we need to go through having a special meeting, but um, we will include you. Michael, you probably already told them when um, yes. we had scheduled yeah. that for. And yeah, yeah. Can you forward that, save the date to the committee? Yes, I will forward that tomorrow morning. Um, Thank so you. Have that invite. And then, Michael, just as a just so we don't forget, we'll need to um, make sure that when we send out the agenda, that S Sandy does it both to the Inland Wetlands Agency Conservation Commission and PNRC. Can do. Yeah. Thank you. So, did you go over? <laughs> sorry about my uh, brief, my abrupt uh, exit, but. Um, did you review the development activity uh, map and did we talk about some of the stuff that was the recent decisions of planning and zoning? So the one or, thing I didn't touch on with the recent decisions was, so Will Husky was approved. Um, uh, Will Husky uh, site was approved. Um, for wetlands. For wetlands. Um, can you give, us, wetlands, can, can yes. you give us a reminder where physically each site is? Yes, actually, let me just, Pull it up so I have Do it you want to? Sh yeah, can I'll you share, share the share the I'll development share my activity. screen here. Yeah, great. Uh, which is this one? All right, here we are. Uh, so uh, what you can see here is our map with our fun multi-season winter and um, summer colors. Um, some of our most recent stuff that we have seen here. 
Um, so other than the denial of BPOZ 1750, the zone change, uh, which was relatively recent, um, that was denied on, back in February. I'm sure many of you have already heard about this. Um, this was, uh, if I just zoom in on our map here. That's the one that was going to come up close to the cedar, actually, the, cedar the swamp property cedar. contained some of the cedar swamp um, property or parcel. So that was denied. Um, they they the, are. Planning, they well, are what are they planning to do <laughs> instead? So they are planning right now. Um, that you know they had that mi mixed use center transition district that you all had looked at um, back in the summer. Um, what they were trying to do is apply that zone or land that zone to the parcel um, uh, immediately adjacent to Timber Drive. And ultimately the Planning and Zoning Commission decided that um, it was not an appropriate place uh, for that zone. I think um, the developers were a little surprised by that given that they had been very transparent that they had wanted to apply that zone particularly to that parcel. So they are still working on resubmitting um, something and they do have a neighborhood meeting coming up um, on April 4th. Um, the town, the staff is not gonna be involved with that. We're, we're not available to attend, but um, we are, you know, basically the developers speaking with the neighbors to see, you know, just to kind of figure out where to uh -oh. um, um, yeah, but, I did. I did notice as driving on 195 for the first time in quite a while, a banner near Timber Drive indicating "Save Our Cedar Swamp." Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be a controversial topic, um, and it's going to continue to be a controversial topic. There are some serious environmental concerns in the back part of that property. Um, but developing only the front will also raise economic concerns for any developer. Um, so it's important to continue to monitor that to see what kind of development gets, gets brought in. Um, and we will keep you in the loop on that. Um, what, what is the current zoning? Currently so zoned right, as a mixed use transitional zone, isn't that correct, Jen? No, so currently it's zoned as the front port. It's the front portion is planned office one. Right. And the back, it was, it's sort of a, um, it's a split. The, the property has two zones, planned office one or professional office one rather, and R90. So mm -hmm. it's one of the few areas that is not RAR90, it's R90. Mm -hmm. So um, when they, when they had drafted these regulations, they had tied the the reg the mixed use center transition zone to parcels in the plan of conservation and development on the future land use map that had that mixed use center transition uh, classification. So if you recall, the the future land use map is a policy map. Um, it's part of the POCD. It's not our zoning map, but it kind of is a with the the planning and zoning commission they tie all of their zoning map amendments and the zoning regs to both the POCD and that future land use map. So when that was, when those regulations were developed, um, they, they developed these regulations so, to, so it would be tied, it could be applied to, there's about five or six parcels in town that have that mixed use center transition zoning. So it was sort of like four corners is supposed to be our mixed use center. And those parcels are adjacent to these areas that are mixed use center, but they're supposed to be sort of a step down, um, not quite as dense. And so that was the reg that this these applicants had developed. Um, it, it was a very prescriptive reg. It was. It, a sort of a form-based code. So basically, if you remember it, I, I believe you all looked at it. Um, it it's basically every tree, every you know, public realm, the the they have, you know, where the windows need to go for every building. 
So it's it's very prescriptive. Um, but I think I I think just ultimately the planning and zoning commission they just felt like maybe they need to take a look at those regulations and 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 see if there's maybe some maybe a little less density is what I'm I'm hearing, but I don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, was this parcel affected by the agreement with the Connecticut Water Company that the zoning had to be remain the same? So the way the agreement, and I'm just learning about this, um, the way the agreement with the Connecticut Water Company goes is that um, there are certain parcels that are in the, the water pipeline overlay zone. So if you go into our GIS, and you look at and you click on the land use button, you'll one of the layers that you can put on is the water pipeline overlay zone. So, so in order to connect and get authorization to connect to Connecticut water, every, every, every application has to go before them. I sit on that board. There's a member of the conservation commission that sits on that board, Meg Reich, sits on that board as part of the Willimantic uh, River Alliance. And basically um, every, every project we have to determine that um, it was designated for um, density is part of the 2006 Plan of Conservation and Development. So in the 2006 Plan of Conservation and Development, this parcel, the subject parcel, which is known as 1750 Stores Road, um, the one that we're talking about adjacent to Timber Drive, part of it was designated for density, that front portion, but part of it was designated for R90. Now, the confusing thing about this is that um, they are allowed to develop that if they can prove that they can get on-site public water. So meaning if they can put in a public well, it's my understanding that they can they can intensify the development. Um, it's it's confused. I'm still trying to wrap my <laughs> head around this, but I've gone, Derek and I looked at the public health code and it looks like basically they, they will be required to connect to Connecticut water. But they will have to show that their property has enough water to drill wells. And, and they did preliminarily show that that was part of what they had to submit when they were trying to land that zone. So when they come back in with their site plan application, if, you know, depending on how this all shakes out, they're gonna have to show that they do have adequate water supplies to have a community well, and then per the public health code, they're gonna be required to connect to Connecticut water. So, so it's it's not as straightforward as like, does it, what was the, what did the POCD say back in 2006? There's a whole bunch of other things that come into play. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, the reason I am asking this is because the back part of that property as I told you, and I want to tell the rest of the committee, was one of the few places in town where there was enough sunlight for the Atlantic white cedars to actually be seeding and growing. So I think it's important to make an effort to preserve that area. You know, we, we have another cedar swamp in town that is not doing well, and here is a chance for one that can do well. So I so, think we need to pay attention to the back part of that property. Yeah. Just just so you know, the the way that if you look at was part of that zone for them to change the zone on that property. Mm -hmm. And again, that was denied. But as part of that zone change, what they did submit was a concept plan. And the majority of, of their concept was outside even the upland review area of the wetlands, right. they have gone out. So, so they just have a small portion of their property that's in even the upland review area. 
So they are really trying to stay out of that area. But if folks feel, I mean, I, I would encourage you to take a look at that concept plan, which is on the web, the website. And, and if they, if you have suggestions, now is the time because planning and zoning is looking at these regulations. Um, I will also say that these developers, there's, they've invested a lot of money in this property. Um, so they, they're going to continue to move forward with some sort of development here. And I think the Planning and Zoning Commission is looking to see what, what's going to be appropriate here. So now would be a time outside of a live application to provide some feedback. New planning and zoning. Correct. Yeah. Because they may not even need to go to wetlands if right. if they're if they if they can put their whole development outside the upland review area, which it looked like they were really trying to do. Yeah. Because of the the way the map is, if they can hug primarily in the front along the back of Timber Drive and not extend towards Cedar Swamp, which is good which is what we want, they don't have to go through wetlands. And that makes most environmental permitting questions go away. You know, um, but that's where we are with that one. Uh, yeah, I well, don't think okay. the- but the, um, but the one thing I wanna say is, does the town need to consider what to do about conserving that back area of well, whatever this so, decides to do. Would you do think we about, want like a conservation easement? Do we want the town to own it? Uh, we want, I, don't I think we want a conservation easement. You know, just right. just from a standpoint of that is a big, beautiful, natural wetland. Um, the standard put in that conservation easement over the big pond behind it, yeah. I yeah. believe, um, if I recollect correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be very reasonable to say, look, we want the conservation easement over that wetland in the exact same way. Um, and I, I don't think I that's think, a complex ask. I don't yeah. think they would have a problem with that at all. Yeah. So do we want to draft a um, a communication to in, to a planning and zoning and inland wetlands that um, there should be effort made to conserve the unique uh, cedar swamp? Well, you, I think what you might want to say is, is something like, um, as you're considering <coughs> the, the mixed use center, you, you know, moving forward with the mixed use center transition zoning or whatever they're going to do with that property. If like, are you thinking that if they were to, to, um, it's not just the swamp, I think you need a buffer, right? I mean, is yeah. it, so, yes. It's, so yeah. is, is 150 feet right. adequate? for a buffer yeah. i don't know i mean i think that we need to go walk the property and find out exactly where the atlantic white cedars are now yeah. and the other factor in here is that one of the folks on timber drive found a spotted turtle and contacted the nddb folks at deep and it's now an official circle for ndb mm -hmm. for this turtle so there, there's a lot going on back there that we need to, I don't know, at least notify PCC yeah. about all this stuff. I, I, I think they know. I think PCC really does know. Um, yeah. But does also consider, we can't just go walk it today, right? There's no application. No. We don't have permission. No. No. Um, I mean, it is the middle of the night, so hypothetically, no one would catch us. No, that's a joke. For the record, that is officially a joke. Um, we should not trespass on anyone's property. Um, right. And that no town staff is advocating for that. But, you know, it is a um, it is uh, something that when and if a redevelopment comes through, there is permission to go on the property for the board that is there. PNRC could ask to be included. That's not unreasonable. Um, I will make sure that all your concerns come before the board, but I believe they know them already. Uh, the people yeah. who live on Timber I, Drive have brought many of the same concerns that you have voiced today yeah. to PCC already. I, um, I would say, though, that um, Chuck Lee, who is the, um, he's sort of the agent for the developer, I think he'd be very happy to take, a, to let you 
walk the property. And um, I also think that it's okay for this commission in your role as advisory to um, to kind of just remind the planning and zoning commission yeah. or, or just, or just, you know, not remind them, but tell them of your concerns for, uh, from your perspective. Yeah. Um, but I do think the developer, the owner of this property is looking for a path forward that's going to work for the town um, and for them. And so I do think now is a really good time to, I, they're really wanting that the developer or the owner is wanting us to all roll up our sleeves to kind of figure out what what can be done here. Um, and I think planning and zoning also is looking for that too. And so now's the time. So it, whatever you would like, if you'd like a, to take a walk down there, that that you can ask that, and and we certainly can talk to Chuck to see if that's something. Um, that he would be willing. The neighbors may yeah. may also be asking for that. Yeah. So okay, I'm I'm thinking that that probably would be a good way for us to understand really what's happening. So if staff could work out a, a permission for us. I don't know whether we have to be a whether the developer would want to accompany us or let us go. I think they would certainly. Yeah, um, and for. For some of the members, historically, what happened in this area was in the 50s, when 195 was built, um, the culvert was set ignoring the cedar swamp that was up from it, upstream from it on the quote, north side. So the cedar swamp drowned, but not all of it, so it's been regenerating now over in places over about um, 60 years. Ken, you're also muted. Yeah, I know. Uh, there's been some interference, so I'm trying to stay muted. Um, yeah, thank you. One, one thing to point out is, is that um, the town has a parcel on the other side of that large building that abuts the back of this lot. Yeah. And one solution would be for them to, to divide the lot in half at the narrow point and give the back half to the town. Yeah, yeah. that parcel runs from fairly close to the existing building that's there to about the middle of the swamp. Um, and then the other side of it is, is owned by that house that you can see back from the road. Yeah, that the rest of the swamp is part of that house. And also the Beckers in Willington own the northern part of the swamp. Yeah. The town line comes across yeah. um, probably about where the stream cuts across the the, the wetland. I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I would really appreciate being able to go back there and find out what is really there right now. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone can arrange a, a visit for us, that would be great. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. thanks, Mike. Yeah. So if if it's okay, can I just run through? I'm not sure what what while I did my abrupt exit, what Michael was able to kind of go through, but I there's there's a few updates that I just wanted to provide you all with, if that's Thank okay. You. Tell me which ones, yeah. and I'll click and zoom to them, Jen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna go through. Let's see. So um, let's see, the multifamily development on the golf course, um, at what known as it's um. The CMC stores, uh, that one right there, the Michaels, that one um, is coming in for a special permit. I would, I think, most likely um, at the second meeting in April. So they were approved for wetlands, and now their next step will be for a special permit, um, and that is owned mm -hmm. by the same owners as owns um, the the property adjacent to um, Timber Drive. And then the next one that yeah, was that, approved. Yeah, that one development has opportunities for um, connections up to Renwood apartments 
and hence right. through a whole area there. As a matter so of fact, what, yeah. There's so nice, we will be, we'll yeah. be scheduling a field trip and uh, you'll, you will have the opportunity to, um, to comment on that. It will be referred out to this commission, to this committee. So mm -hmm. I know that you've spent a lot of time back tromping in those woods. So now that will be the time to, to provide that formal input to, to that yeah. process. Okay. So, so, so we're going, so we would go on the PZC field trip. Before. You can go. Yep. Or you can have your own field trip. Um, I know you've been out there before, so whatever but, you'd like to yeah, do. But we don't know what they're proposing now. Yeah. Right. So that we have not received their application. I, it will be pretty similar to what was approved in wetlands, which is on uh, this development activity story map. So, um, yeah. you know, most of the development is down towards the road. Um, so, but we don't have the live application as of yet. Um, will Husky, that is the property on King Hill and North Eagleville Road that I also think that they're coming in for a special permit, I would say sometime this spring. Uh, but again, I don't have their application. Yeah. I don't, they're not going to be changing much of their application from wetlands. All of these, you know, they can't, they would have to come back to wetlands if they were to change it radically. It's and they really been, don't want to do that. Exactly. No, they've already mm -hmm. spent a lot of time and money doing that. Um, I did receive word today that um, the, the development that had been approved for wetlands, um, the the portion of, of the the vacant portion adjacent to Toast at Four Corners and Hops Forty Four, they will be there. Um, they'll be filing a special permit that will be received on the, at the April fourth meeting. So again, that will also be referred to you all. Um, Eagleville Green is they are. Um, they are, we are about to um, issue their zoning permit. So they, they've they got their funding, they're moving forward. Um, and we are, I think we've reported to you a few other times, but we did receive a large grant from the Department of uh, Economic and Community Development, $4.7 million to do a multi-use trail in front of Eagleville Green. So really to improve improve that to slow traffic. And part of that $4.7 million is to assist them um, with making needed um, improvements to the pump station for uh, their sewage and also um, the, to provide some gap financing for them. And at this time, the 34 of the 42 units will be available to residents um, earning or households earning 60% or lower of a, of area median income. See, so that's the Mansfield Housing Authority, isn't it? Or some entity well, from it's, them? It's hmm. it's called it, it's a separate entity. It's the yeah. the nonprofit, but yes, it's basically yeah. it's their nonprofit arm. Um, and then I think maybe while I was we discussed 541 5, uh, 55 while you were out. Yeah. Um, we discussed that, the upcoming field trip, um, and that this is currently in review. Um, so that is, I think, everything other than the standard, which is, of course, ongoing. Uh, we might have lost Jen again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Potentially lost Jen again. Um, to jump in. Uh, yes, so jump in. Uh, the standard is proceeding apace. Um, I was out there today doing our ENS inspection. Um, that is going. They continue to have issues getting their tracking pad in because the DOT has not given their final review. So they are sweeping the street daily. Um, and so that's proceeding apace of the standard, which is the update we have on that one. Um, Can you hear me, Michael? I can now. Yes, You're back. Yes. Okay, You're great. Welcome. Okay, good. Um, I I have two other quick updates. Um, 
the the first is is that the planning is just as an FYI um, for affordable housing. Anything over five, anyone who's who is proposing more than five units uh, per our affordable housing regulations has to do a mandatory set aside of units um, for for households making 80% or lower of the area median income. Um, at the February, I think it was the, I think it was the March 6th meeting um, or February 27th, I can't remember, they're all coming into a blur. Planning and zoning increased that set aside amount from 10 to 15% of the units. So that's just, that's just something that you should all know about. Um, the second is that the Planning and Zoning Commission enacted a temporary moratorium on development within the DMR, the Design Multiple Residence Zone, and the PVRA zone. So planning and zoning is looking at those two zones, the DMR being a floating zone and PVRA being the zone down in Pleasant Valley, um, to, to look at ways that, you know, those, those have been too, especially the PVRA, there's been a lot of development interest, but, but nothing that really has been appealing to either the owner or the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, so it's going to be a matter of um, kind of threading that needle. Um, and I think the Planning and Zoning Commission is interested in doing more middle housing down at the PVRA with the intention of preserving the agricultural land um, there. So it would be something probably fairly similar to what is already there. You know, 35% of the prime and important agricultural soils would need to be preserved. But instead of it being, you know, just traditional multifamily housing, which it can be right now, maybe more of like a cottage style development or um, more small lot single family um, housing is what they're, I think they're leaning towards, but they're going to be working with the zoning consultant. So whatever happens, you'll have the opportunity to weigh in on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that Pleasant Valley or with this proximity to Easton's playing fields and so forth is an area that lends itself to connections. And of course, Sunny Acres Park, you know, which is there also. I think Jennifer's gone. No, no, she's here. No, I'm, I'm oh, here. here. Okay, Jennifer, yeah. what's happening yeah. with the Chesmer property across from uh, Freedom Green? That is in the PVRA. There is not. There is a moratorium currently on development right there. That we've had a we had a lot of we had some pre applications on that property, um, and nothing moved forward. So now um, we're going to be sitting down with the planning and zoning. Commission and Robin just to try to figure out something that could work. I want to make sure we have both Hussey and Robin involved in that process. And frankly, I'm not sure how this would work, but as we reorganize our zoning regulations, we have so many zones in this town. And I'm thinking that um, one thought I have, but I, I it kind of have to roll up our sleeves, is that the we would the PVRA zone and the and the PV the PVRA and DMR would be kind of our middle housing zone. So it would be like if you are adjacent or or you know within say X number of feet of preserved farmland, then you must consider preserving X percentage of farmland. But it would be kind of similar. Um, similar kind of type of zone. So it would only we'd only have to have one zone. Um, but that that's sort of my preliminary thoughts. And I need to review this with Taiki, our zoning consultant, to see, you know, what could really be implementable. You know, we want to talk with Robin and, and Bruce Hussey. Are there any other questions related to the story map? Otherwise, I can put it away. Yeah. All right, seeing none. Yeah, good.
Okay. Um, the, let's see, the, on the communications, um, Michael already uh, briefed us on what he had written in his letter so we can get to know him. Uh, I will acknowledge that I've been find him very easy to work with, and I think several of the members of the committee do too, and very knowledgeable. And more important, he he listens. I agree. Uh, sorry, what was that? You, you listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Reports from members. I have a question. Are we going to discuss meeting in person? Yes, that is two items down on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. never mind. Future That's meetings. Um, I don't know how many of you noticed, but I've attended a couple of sessions for Connecticut countryside. And what that is, is that's partnering with uh, Bolton, Coventry, and Tolland, and of course, Mansfield to um, set up, uh, encourage visiting. But a couple of the topics that came up in those um, um, sessions were doing something jointly for trails and for biking and so forth, as, and also, of course, the um, Willimantic River as uh, resources that would encourage people to come visit our area. And um, I don't know, I've been using Connecticut Trail Finder um, quite extensively for find things because it's now set up so you can download a KLM of the of a, of trails or, a, or a, a GIS map that uh, I've been just importing it into a app on my um, phone and using it to figure out where I was when I was walking on some of the trails in town. So. It, that's starting to now get to be a useful resource. I don't know whether anybody else has anything to share in the report. Hmm. Hmm. I see Sue reaching out. Is she there? She there. They are. Yeah. I did have a question for you guys. Yeah. There she. There they are. Oh, she's got yeah. some. We're not working a on a guys. Fly there? No. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm trying to find out how to, how to turn it on. They can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. We can. Yes. We can hear you. Can. Oh, good. Okay. We're, we're on the third computer for the night, and this is not one I'm familiar with. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing a little computer struggling, and our our internet has gone out a couple of times. So it's been Jennifer an interesting gave evening. Jennifer gave up on her computer. <laughs> gave up on her computer. <laughs> I don't blame her. Yeah, there's definitely something weird with the internet tonight. So anyway, um, we were that we've been down at Marrow almost every day, and Marrow has come alive in the Froggy and Bee Department. The um, peepers and wood frogs have been singing since Saturday, and the solitary bees arrived on the scene today. They all popped up out of the ground and are all running around my head. So. Things are happening at Marrow. Um, we're planning on doing a Mother's Day uh, program at uh, Bicentennial and our Trail Day kids game at uh, Marrow. And then we'll do another Marrow walk in August um, when everything is out, the Joe Pie extravaganza. Um, we're going to try to get um, people out looking at the habitat, but also uh, getting more acquainted with the bees, because the bees have been tons of fun at Nero over the past couple of years. Um, and um, Pollinator Pathways reached out to me again and want to sit down and talk 
more about what's going on in Mansfield. So I'll try to um, set up a meeting with a few of them um, just so we keep in touch with them. So that's kind of where we're at. I've been subbing every day. So I unfortunately am kind of out of the loop on field trips and such with the uh, grand school extravaganza going on. Uh, they've been freeing up teachers to go set up their rooms. So I've been in, filling in their spaces while that's going on. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> where is the... I don't know. It's. Anybody else have anything else to report to the committee? Okay, so that brings us to future meetings and the question is in-person meetings. I would uh, think, uh, I'm looking kind of at Miranda that we may want to um, do a hybrid option. Um, if the meetings are in person, then I will make it work and I will be there. There are times when it's certainly been convenient, but um, yeah. I'm also looking forward to meeting in person. So we will offer all in-person meetings if the commission chooses to meet that way as hybrid um to ensure that people who cannot attend are still able to see them i believe that's actually a mandate from the governor or the state legislature um so anytime we are meeting in person we will still have zoom options available so i'm covered uh, exactly so that'll work um and we can do that for the next meeting if you choose I, uh, I personally am in favor of that. Is there anybody that objects to, um, uh, you know, getting together in person with the option that you can join us for Zoom? Um, and I would lean towards seeing if we could get one of the larger conference rooms. You know, B is pretty good size, you know, if it's available on our our meeting night. Do you all still want to meet at 7 p.m. on Tuesdays or uh, is there, do you want to continue to stick with that? Works for me. Yeah, You're yeah all, that works. I'm in the oh. habit of doing that. Um, so our next meeting would be um, May. Mm -hmm. Although with the quantity of activities going on, may want to call a special meeting, but see what happens. Mm -hmm. And we have discussed that the developers option a field trip out to what I think of as the, the North Cedar Swamp in town. I realized glancing down here, I didn't query staff to see if we should go into executive session. You're good. Yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure that's not necessary at this time. Yeah. Okay. So I think that brings us to adjournment with a comment that everybody's been very patient with how the, you know, this has been one of our longer meetings in quite a while. My cat tried to knock over a lamp in the middle of it, so that was fun. Oh, that's what we heard. That's what happened. Yes, I was yelling at the cat, and I did not realize the mic was on. I had actually turned off the camera to go and do it off screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So, a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. I see Ken raising his hand, and I see Tom and Sue seconding it. And I see Tom and Sue seconding it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Where, Anyone opposed to adjourning? And I'll ask that Michael um, stop the recording. <laughs> <laughs>